and join me right now and on video for the very first time is Mr. Marshall Masters. How are you, my friend? I'm great, Michael. Been good to come back. Been a while. It's been too I'm long. Looking forward to this. It's been too long, Marshall, and this is the first time I'm seeing you on video for the very first time and it might be the first time for lots of people at home and i'm glad that we can finally do this on video and i'm sure they appreciate seeing you well it's a good thing i hope they do too and um since we're doing video one of the things i wanted to show you is the kind of work we're doing i have a tele couple of telegram channels I'm on X and Telegram. I'm kind of getting back into social media. No point in being on YouTube or Google or anything with those guys. Right. You know, they, uh, I'm a persona non existo or whatever for them. <laughs> you can't find me there. But with our, uh, with my uh, group that's on Telegram, and it's called Yowza Observations. And so to kind of kick things off tonight, you know, so we can get into what's happening with Planet X, I want to show you the kind of stuff we're posting and actually go through some of these that have been posted and talk about them, the kind of things that we see. What I want your listeners to understand is that with my Yowza Observations channel, I bet everything. If I give it a thumbs up, it's because I've evaluated it. I have been doing observation reports, gosh, longer than anybody else, at least maybe 15 years, all right? And especially, no, actually it was since 2013. And there's a lot of stuff out there and it's a lot of garbage. And that people need to understand that. Now, I have been dealing with these jerks forever who are suppressing it because they want you to die. And they want Planet X to do it so that they can say, it's not us. It's the big ugly thing in the sky, right? And they want to blame it on that typical, always blame it on somebody else. And so there's a, there are people that are doing good work, and then there's stuff that's all over the map. And the things that are all over the map and difficult to follow, they get the bandwidth. They get the search engine traffic. But if you're reporting with any kind of consistency and quality, you know, <laughs> that's it. And um, so I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to look at some of the observation videos that the folks that are on my Yowza Observations channel on Telegram are submitting to me. I go through that. Believe it or not, I delete an awful lot of this stuff. I delete about a third of the posts. Oh, wow. Okay. I only want things that are useful. I don't... The minute somebody, a host or someone who is well, good a so-called researcher says, well, gee, what do you think about that? Tell me down in the comment lines. I'm going, you sorry son of a bitch. You're just a freaking entertainer pretending to do something else. You want the traffic. It's all for the clicks. Don't put something up unless you try to vet it and explain it and give people context. And that's what I'm doing. So what do you say I uh, do a little screen share here, spin oh, yes. it up, let's take a stroll down Planet X lane. Love that, and of course, for those who don't know, you actually yourself have observed the two suns in the sky. Yeah, well, you're gonna see- Much more of that, yeah. Suns. Love that, yes. Okay, so now, Here's uh, here's one that we had uh, not too long ago. I'm doing the more recent ones. Now, this is, you see here, this was actually captured in Iran. 
Interestingly very, enough, the very Iranians are all over this. And uh, wow. I have a few Iranians who are helping me with the channel and posting observations. And they're looking, they're digging. And this one I really liked. Now, here's a lot of what we see. You see in these red circles here, all right? That is, one of these is the sun and the other is Nemesis. There's been a lot like these. We get a lot like these. Now, this one is, I must have watched this video a dozen times. This is like out of a sci-fi movie with the cloud cover and everything. But the reason why I'm so fascinated is that Nemesis and the sun are so close together. And this is because Nemesis is in its perihelion phase, and we'll talk about that later. So here's a really stellar shot. Oh, is that something? That's pretty good. Yeah, this is the good stuff here. Now, what's really good is you know, when you're looking at the reflections in the water, that really helps out. But what I liked about this one, the nemesis isn't bright enough to have reflection in the water, but the cloud cover is moving in front of it. It's impossible for that to happen with a lens flare because lens flares happen in front of the lens or in the lens. And you think this one is 100% genuine? There's no AI or any tomfoolery? No it's tomfoolery. It's pretty legit. I go in and evaluate everything. And nobody has been doing image analysis on Planet X more or longer than I have, period. And this is my, you know, this is my thing. I really wasn't excited about doing it, but really? I had to do it because people were talking and asking questions. So here, for example, if you see, you're seeing the sun, you're seeing Nemesis. Now, what you see here is, this is what I often do with these for the folks that are on my Yaza Observations channel on Telegram. This is a gamma test where I pull the gamma out. And what you can see is Nemesis is very strong, but not strong enough to cause a reflection in the water. Right. But it nonetheless, it passes gamma. Now, here's another one that uh, this was kind of difficult, but you can see off to the right-hand side. And I think this one is more, uh, this one was a hard call, but I did a gamma on it and it came out. And this was from uh, Campesi, Italy. And this was not that long ago. Uh, here was another one. Sometimes my guys throw me stuff like this. And this is a meteor that is supposed to be coming down, but people are wondering, is it really a meteor? Now, here's another one. This is a very typical, you hear them in the background, listen. Can you hear the sound? I am not receiving any sound, actually. Pardon? I'm not receiving any sound from the uh, video. Not? No. Screen share is on. You should be seeing it. I'm seeing it, though, yeah. But no audio. Let me go here and see. Were we supposed to be hearing audio? Well... A little bit of yelling or something? Well, I think it's... Um, uh -huh. I didn't turn the audio on. So this one, you can hear the people in the background talking. This is a, this is a very good observation. Now, here's one that I really like. And right there is Nemesis. You see where I have the... Oh, the I see pointer? that, yeah. Okay. Ah, wow. And it catches it as it's rising up from the horizon. And it's partially occluded, as you know, as is the sun. This is uh, 
a fabulous, fabulous capture. These are the ones I really like. Yeah, this one's quite good. I don't think I've ever seen uh, one like that before. And now here, this one is, let me just turn off the audio. There you can see it. You can see the object? Yeah. All wow. right. Here's another one. It's off to the left-hand side. Now, there's a Planet X FAQ that explains why it's never in the same place. And there's a very simple reason for it. Mm, some complex factors, but we can talk about that later when we get into my Planet X FAQ. And by the way, this is still in Iran. Uh, no, this one is uh, Italy. Oh, in Italy Santa still, okay. Teresa di Galaru. And this is 719 2024. I'm like, Iran looks pretty so nice from are, here. Uh, these are recent <laughs> ones. Now, this one, oh my God. This, I looked at this and I go, this is a book cover. <laughs> you know? Oh, look at that. The sun is below the bridge and Nemesis is above the bridge. Is that a stunning, stunning image? That's a good one, yes. Yeah. Now, here's one that uh, it looks like it's early morning, and really, we had to work with this a lot, uh, but it did pass gamma, and, uh, you know, it's hard to say. Uh, but here was the gamma for that. This is, this is what it looks like, and this one was difficult. You can see a faint image here so it was one of those it was a tough call i went with it uh here's a, an interesting one we get a lot of this and sometimes we have an image in front of the sun which is usually going to be a lens aberration uh, here's an here it is again this is uh, in brazil and they're catching them together. Yeah, I was going to say, this is no lens flare effect. This is, yeah, we're past lens flare. It, it seems all... pretty in there, yeah. Yeah, this is in here. So now, here's the point. You're looking at these objects here, okay? And here's the two objects. What's this? It's the lamppost. Why does the lamppost past gamma because it's creating light anything that is only that cannot create light or cannot create a lot of reflected light from something that is natural or synthetic that creates light so when we were doing it that is just the street lamp right here that guy but here is where you see the sun and nemesis yeah all right Here's another one. This is, you know, this was like, whoa, <laughs> we got, you know, we got another Star Trek here. And um, here, this is, this was a tough one. And I'm going to move it forward a little bit because this was something, let's watch this. Sure. The, the observer, he either used some sort of filter, most likely sunglasses, and here you can see Nemesis right here very clearly, and you can see the sun. But without that, you can't see it. So he has to have something blocking. And I was surprised that he could actually get a filter shot like this because I can definitely tell this is like maybe 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. This is pretty late in the morning time for an observation, yet he picked it up. And that's something that's really cool because people are becoming more savvy in their observations. Now, and it's not all of these, you know, WTF videos like, oh, what the fuck is that? Yeah, what is your blah, blah, blah. They're doing that. No, people are seeing it and they're trying to understand it. And that's amazing. And I see a, a sea change in terms of how people are observing this. Now, here's one that is 
for me, it was stunning because you can see there's the sun and Nemesis is right up above and behind it right here. And this is a stunning photo. This is an easy one. This is a no brainer. I mean, if you call this a lens flare, yeah. you got poo poo caca for <laughs> Okay. I agree. <laughs> this is about as classic as you're going to get, my friend. Now, this one, I like these, you know, because I have good, clear separation, a nice sky. Uh, the person is catching it. We're seeing foreground, background. He's doing different things, changing his zoom. People are doing that. I love it when they do that. Now, here's another one that. This is kind of tricky. You can see it off to the left-hand side. And here's another one where we're still going through this phase and people are going, you know, is this moons or is yeah. it what? It's not. It's, uh, this is early morning and that's what they're catching. And it depends on the time of day you're, and where you're at. And it looks beautiful there, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And uh, here we go. That one's look That's at a good that. shot. That's yeah, really stunning. There we go. They got it again. This that this is nice. Is another book cover. Yeah, that one's great. I couldn't believe it. I thought this was a cloud reflection. All right, and uh, we'll see a little later. I did a gamma on it. Here's another one. We I, now where you see. Nemesis, very close to the sun, almost like a, a zit. You know, that's I right, remember, yeah. Right? And we'll want to talk about that more. There you go, you see it. And again, it's back in the background. Uh, this one is, I, I had a hard time with this, had to do some analysis. And uh, we'll see these, just remember that we, we covered these. But here is this one right here, all right? And over here, the folks of my channel were going, that's got to be Nemesis over there. And I went ahead and did a gamma on it. And I have the natural glare from the sun. And over here, though, what you can see, you see in the, the center of the sun where you have the white and then the sh different shades, the lighter pastel shades. And that's how I can tell this is a natural object because you have these natural beige shades here, beige uh, here again. And so his camera, whatever he's using a smartphone is really trying to pick that up. Yeah, here's one. This is, I saw this and I'm going, oh my God. This is really good. And I had people, it, it was a troll came up with, well, it doesn't pass the two finger test. And so I gave him a one finger answer. Because <laughs> the two finger test was something 10 years ago, the trolls were doing it. And you can see with Nemesis, you see how the tree branch goes through it? Yeah. But with the sun, it it looks like it's the tree branch is cut out, right? It does. All right. The reason for that is light bends. And how do we know light bends? Because that's how they proved the theory of relativity by Einstein, was that they had light from an object that was bending around the gravity well of the sun, as Einstein predicted, and then they knew it was correct, so light bends. And what happens is with this much brightness, this much intensity, the light will literally blend and bend and enfold whatever that object is. But an object without enough light, as you see, that branch is definitely covering in front of it. This was a really, for me, this was really cool. I like that one, yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Now, here we go. And uh, this one is, it was another photo. Are it we in the UK? The side, and 
I was kind of like, well, I'm not sure. And this Manchester. was Manchester, yeah, UK. I was right. And here is another one. This is also from the UK, and this was on this was reported on Twitter. Is that and look at it. We have it's so bright. Both objects have a reflection in the water. You let's go back here. You see this? I do. It's that dual reflection in the water. A lens flare doesn't make reflection in the water like the sun. Okay, so you got two suns making these amazing reflections. Now, this was another one that somebody put it in from Zeta Talk, Nancy Leader. And I I kept it up there. They're saying this was Zeta Talk saying it's Nibiru. And I'm saying, well, and and it's pointing, as you can see, it's pointing towards the south pole of the sun. Well, the reason why I put it up is that the north pole of Nemesis is always pointing at our sun, just like the planet Uranus. And uh, so I, I thought that was valuable. And there they have a close-up of Nibiru. Now, with Zeta Talk, sometimes they got some good stuff, other times... Not so much. Like, you know, what planet does this come from? But um, you never know. Blind Hog can find an acorn. That's right. They thought gets lucky. Uh, they've been doing it. Nancy been doing it since 1995. Woo! And here we go. This is um, another one where I did a gamma on a previous. Remember what I'm telling you is that look at the at the core. That's the hottest part right there. That's the hottest part of the object. All right. Yes, white hot. That's right. And now here's another one where. When the guy, he sees it, and let's just watch this for a second. He sees it, and when he changes his zoom, it comes up full on. Yet, when you look at it initially, you don't see it. And this is the reason why I'm so excited about the observation videos people are doing, because they're... They're just not going, oh, isn't that interesting, like taking pictures out of a tour bus window. You know, Harry, look at that. They're making tacos and tamales. You know, no, none <laughs> of this crap. I mean, this right here is he had to zoom in and look at it. It's just stunning. So here's another one. You see? Yeah. They're, they're moving around, wow. zooming in, zooming out. He zooms out zooms in and look at that now i want to go back here's an important thing to remember let's with cameras first off the best smartphones for making these observations are ios android eh, you know it's not so good but apple they're much more sensitive across the light spectrum and really do some interesting things Here's another one where the sun above, nemesis below. Now, is that amazing? That's a good one. That's a keeper. Yeah, these are good you shots, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I love it. All right. And uh, there we go. There's another one. Nemesis in the upper left-hand corner. And sometimes my guys will find something from 2023 that's really good, and they'll throw it in. It's like, I'm good. As long as it's 2023 or 2024, I don't want anything older than that. But here, this is, look at, as he zooms in, more distance separates. I mean, if you go back, let's go a little earlier. Look at the amount of, look at right there, look at the amount of separation between the sun and nemesis. And then, as it zooms in, look at the separation increasing. This is uh, the result of the zoom function in the lens. All right. The, and this is, again, oh, uh, we want to watch this. This is cool. Watch. Uh-oh. Come on, Marshall. 
Now, uh, watch how the clouds are moving in front of Nemesis. Can you see the clouds moving over it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's it, it saddens me that it's so difficult for people to get the good ones like this because there's so much crap. Oh, there's there. a lot of bad ones. Yeah, there's just so much. And they're there intentionally. You know. Yeah, this, this looks now, pretty good, this though. This one is, this again, this was like, uh, this is the red kachina theme, and it is, uh, that is just a stunning image. I mean, this is, my gosh, you know, like, you would expect to see this on a book cover. And here is, I did uh, a gamma analysis on something else that panned out and I was commenting. There you can see, you see it just up off the right-hand side? I do. Okay, now you see this one that's dancing? Yes. That's a lens flare. All right, it's a classic lens flare. Big difference is lens flares move around. Unless you have your imaging device sitting on a tripod with a remote trigger, you're not going to have a lens flare that stands still. They're going to move around because you're moving around. Even if it's just a little bit, you're still moving yeah, around. Yeah, you'll still dance around. Now, here is, you see that. Let's go. This was the gamma test that I did on it. And as you can see, it is, you know, you, you, there's first off, I always want to see clear separation. I want to see dead space between the objects because otherwise it could just be some sort of cloud burst reflection something you know something i could explain away so this whole held up now here's another one and i love this look at this again we have the sun and look at this nice long reflection in the water here is nemesis and Nemesis is is partially occluded by the horizon. And pay close attention. Look at the reflection in the water. Smaller and shorter, but still, nonetheless, right there. I mean, this That's is a great a, shot. As a, yeah, this is a great, great shot. And this was taken in Florida back a year ago. Uh, and that, you know, so that's the reason why I want 2023, 2024, because really in these last two years is where I'm getting the good stuff, the really good stuff. Now, here's another one. And what do we have? Nemesis is so occluded by cloud cover, it's not bright enough to reflect in the water. But the sun is, in the, and it's not a, you're not seeing the white tips. You know, in um, the reflection in the white and on the top of the waves, but still, this is a keeper. Oh my gosh, this is a beautiful keeper. And here's another one where somebody was, you know, what's this off to the side here? And they're going, it looks like Nemesis. I did an analysis on it, and I said, now nah, you're chasing a ghost. This is, you've heard me say so far, you know, cloud reflections. And or you know a cloud deformation or something. This was clouds. That's it. And the guy was kind of broken hearted because I had to tell him he's chasing a ghost. But I call him like I see him. And here again, you can see where he you know he's looking at it, but it wasn't the real deal. Again, you can see it. Now here is uh, this is Manchester again. Another beautiful one. And this one was, I got it from Queenland's, but he's going, I'm not sure what the shadow is under the sun. And I was going, no, no, you're chasing a ghost. But here, now this is great. Look at this. Both Nemesis and the sun are shining through the foliage. 
Yeah, that one's a bit harder to fake for the, the skeptics out there watching this video. That's right. Because I'm sure they're trying to shoot through uh, everything we've watched so far. Oh, well, you know, they come on. And this they, one's good, you know, though. This one's going to be harder to uh, this debunk. One, well, you can't look at that. I mean, it's like the the branches are clearly covering. Yeah, that's going to be hard to um, and actually the sun, dismiss. Partially, although the sun's very bright. Right. But you cannot have, uh, a, remember, a lens flare happens directly in front of the camera lens or that's inside right. the camera lens. It's not going to happen. You know, this is probably uh, uh, two, three hundred feet away from him. Yeah, that's no lens player, by the way. That's it. There you go. So here, this was, we were looking at it, and it was like, nah, I don't know. This is, but it was interesting. You know, it, it, <laughs> it almost it looks like a face. Emphasis with a happy face or something. Yeah. And uh, it's like, okay, <laughs> so our, uh, you know, our, our nemesis research is now we have new emoticons. That's I true. I think that would be a great emoticon, don't you think? It's a, I'm trying to describe how that face even looks. It's, uh, it looks almost disappointed, almost. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It was just, you know, so I, I just really liked it and left it up there. And yeah. um, this one came out of central china wow and this is look at this we have three objects three objects all right i must have studied this one oh my gosh uh, for for almost an hour in analyzing it there are three hot objects they both they all pass uh gamma so why are they three well it's because what you know this would be like the sun and nemesis this would very likely be helion which is the innermost gas giant and it's very bright in the nemesis system and so that would be nemesis helion and uh, the sun and the three in there and this one's from China. We get this. I mean, we're starting to get more stuff that's you know, really pushing us to, to do research. Uh, here's one where I was doing an analysis on it, and I told the guy, you're chasing a ghost. Here's one that I really, this is a close-up shot of that one we were talking about. Right. And I was using this because... I see something like this and I'm explaining it to folks. I'm always trying to teach them and give them some valuable stuff, but I also want them to be able to get something to me that's interesting and I will analyze it and tell them whether you're chasing a ghost or you got the real deal. This was the real deal. Uh, here I did a gamma, remember the China with that's the three right. objects? Look at that. Wow. All three are hot. This is hot gamma. It doesn't get any better with gamma. And uh, this one is eerie. It's eerie because I am seeing Nemesis down here. I'm seeing the sun up here. But this is something where cloud reflections and really can change the nature of the observation. But when I evaluated this and tested it, and by the way, I also not only do what I call gamma test, determine if it's a natural object, but I'm also looking for obvious signs of Photoshop, uh, photo editing. And a lot of photo editing used to happen years ago. You don't see it anymore. I know how to spot photo editing like in a heartbeat. And I'm not going to share it with you, okay? <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, because if I were to tell everybody how I can spot Photoshop editing, then I would be explaining to the schmucks how to do it more efficiently. And I don't want to help them. Good point, yeah. Um, Definitely don't okay. want that. So if you want to say Marshall gets an F for plays well with others, you know, okay, you know, but they're trolls. Screw them. Now... <laughs> 
Here is gamma. Now you really look at this. Look at this. This is stunning. And I was really impressed with this. Here's another one where you see it. And I have to tell you, when I saw this, I'm looking at this uh, and the sun, but I'm uh, looking, and this is Nemesis. But I'm going, is this a lens flare? And I had to, because it came in from Ecuador, it was August, it was this month. And, but also when you have a lens aberration, you see this, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the light green kind of looks like an eye. Yeah. The sea green the color. Yeah. And this is something you would see with lens flares, but you can also see it with natural objects. And uh, I had to really look at it. Here's another one. So we're not going to talk about how there's two suns. Look at that. You know, people are seeing this stuff, Michael. They're seeing this stuff. And they're asking the right questions. God love them. I just am delighted. Now, here's another one. Here we went to do, I did the gamma on it. And you can see, and it was it was a tough call, but I'm looking at what we have going on with cloud and the other things going on. So I, I went ahead and figured, yeah, let, let's, it passes gamma and I'm just going to, I'm going to lump it on the other stuff. And here's a nice one. There's the sun, there's nemesis, and then there's a cloud shadow. This is really kind of strange. And I'm looking at that and I'm going, I don't know. There's something wrong here. And what I did was here was the gamma test. And you can see with the gamma test, and I did a very strong gamma test, but what looked like Nemesis and maybe another object, you can see they're not generating light. All right. And so this was truly, this is a lens aberration. All right. That looks like one. That's right. It's it's a lens aberration because we're not getting heat off these other objects. So I would say that this is something I'm looking at uh, the atmospheric lensing that's going on here. And this would cause not so much in an iOS phone. iOS phone would filter and handle this much more efficiently. Uh, this looks like it's a cheap Android. You know, it's a hundred dollar Android phone. Um, here, this is, you know, this is a cool one. Look at that. You know, this is, we have all of this stuff going on in the sky. This is Nibiru tank. And look at, you can see, see the lens flares that are popping around. And you see the purplish halo. You see the halo around the lens flares. Right. And that was the reason why I was surprised. You know, suspicious of the other one but look how these lens flares are dancing and the halo comes and goes but these objects are steady state that's right yeah that's they're the solid most important. here's another red kachina you know and it's a kind of question hello dear marshall what do you think about the post is kachina red and this is one of uh, the guys uh, who is uh, from iran Hmm. Okay. And um, the uh, and it is. It's like you know, this could be an atmospheric thing, but also it's red kachina, and I explain red kachina on my site uh, quite extensively. Actually, I have an FAQ on it. So here, look at this. Look at this. Is that stunning? That is so stunning. And you can see the difference in light. You know, the clouds. That's you right, see yeah. The clouds are occluding, you know, slightly over. And he's moving. There's a huge amount of movement. There's movement from the observer, but movement also with the clouds, a runner. And it's absolutely rock setting. 
I mean, if you want a take it to the bank, this is the big bad ugly rock in the sky. You got it. This is this has got it all. And here's another one just like it. Beautiful. They're catching it off. And um, here is, now this is something I actually used this in one of my Planet X FAQ videos because I thought it was so good. Look at, here's Nemesis. Here's Nemesis. Excuse me, here's the sun. Below that, there's Nemesis right there. All right. And what you are seeing here is a time lapse. And this came out of China, I believe. Um, this came off of a webcam. And it had excellent, excellent. This was uh, very impressive. And so I think that, yeah, that gets it. That's what we have so far. So just remember, Yowza Observations on Telegram. On and, Telegram, okay. Yeah, come over to uh, Telegram, and I think I sent you the link. People can, if you want to see two suns in the sky observation reports that have been vetted. Let me repeat that word. <laughs> vetted. All right. I will tell you, everything I've showed you, maybe it was a close call. Maybe I didn't see that it was a, you know, it was a lens object uh, or lens flare or some sort of aberration. And if I feel that it's instructive, it's useful that I can tell people something, I'll put it up. But otherwise, uh, no. And if there's any, any Photoshopping going on, any editing, nah, it doesn't get past me. And I don't, you know, I don't even explain it with those. I just delete them. And that's it. That's how I moderate. You know, if it's not the good stuff, you go. You're gone. Bye. Yeah. So understood. There we go. Very nice. And that that was our little tour. Um, and you're seeing what Love we're that. doing. And I welcome people, especially if you're out there and you are making observations. Submit them. All right. And I'm not going to let anybody take cheap shots at you. I've had that. I had a couple of trolls. I don't usually ban them. I just humiliate them, and then they just go away. And because uh, if you ban them, they'll come in with another, you know, they'll come in with another identity. But if they know they can't get past first base with me, they just say, ah, move on, go find some other sucker. Um, but come on and take a look. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is the, and actually, I, if you want, I can just share. Yeah, you can share the screen. screen. Go ahead. And the, do, 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 do. here we go. Share a screen. And I'll do start sharing screen. Now, if you come to my site, YOWUSA, and you look up here for Planet X FAQ. All right. And this is a list of, these are 10 videos that I did. And I put them up there about eight to 10 minutes each. I kept them convenient viewing link. So the common questions. You know, people ask me, what is Planet X? For folks that have been studying it for a long time, you don't think of asking that question. But it's a big one for newbies. Yes, it's a new one uh, since uh, since these TikTok videos have uh, taken off. A lot of uh, newer newer people just coming into um, realization that there's a, another object in the sky. That's right. That could potentially so, wipe us out. wipe us out. And here is uh, the one that is uh, of all of them. There's about four of the six that are really popular. This uh, Planet X FAQ number five, what is the pole shift? And 
you come in and there you are. I'm the coming finally discussed. Shift. The crustal and I'm ship. Going in and I'm telling the you all we're going separation. to get into the destroyer as it appeared. To and it is in terms of the autographs. The upper man. Now, what I will tell you is that where did I get a lot of the graphics for this series of 10 videos? Is over the, the last couple of years, I have been doing uh, special paid conferences. And these are for paying audiences, and it usually costs them, uh, you know, at least about 50 or $60 to attend. And these are the ones I, I had literally just a couple of hundred slides I had presented for these things, and I used them for this series. But here's one I want everybody to, this is, Planet X FAQ number nine, where to see Planet X, all right? And this is the one I'd like you to, now that you've seen our Telegram channel, is that you want to get in there. Like, for example, remember I showed you that time lapse from China? That's right, yes. There it is. I used it. And here I break it out. Here's my analysis, all right? And it's like, hold on a second. It's it's a BOGO deal. Buy one, get one free. You get one and another for free, right? Nice, so yes. We found two objects. So again, remember, this is the second time out of China I'm getting these triple observations. The This will, this is actually right here. Uh, this was, this image for me is the money shot. And it really is the money shot. This is the one I've been waiting for all my life. And it came on July 4th, 2020. It was released by White Hats. What it is, is this right here is Nemesis. And it is in the process of... It's Nemesis, and it is in the process of crossing the ecliptic. And these are the planets, moons, satellites around it. And this was taken, this was released to the public covertly by the White Hats when Trump was uh, giving his uh, July 4th speech. But here, like, uh, and we talked uh, before about, remember I said uh, with the Chinese, it looks like uh, the three objects, you have Nemesis, the Sun, and Helion. And so here are the three planets, and these are the ones identified in my book, Surviving the Planet X Tribulation, which came out 10 years ago. And by the way, everything in that is right on the money to this day. Uh, it is consistent. The data is corroborating what we put up 10 years ago. So here's Nemesis. Helion is a gas giant. It's very bright. In the Nemesis mini constellation, it would probably look like a second sun. Now, uh, then there's Arboda. Arboda is an inhabited rocky planet, larger than Earth. And then there's Nibiru, which again is larger than Earth. And if you, this is when I was actually looking for the very first time, uh, I saw Nibiru, which I call Blue Bonnet, and I observed it for the very first time on December 26, 2012. And that's it right there. And we tracked that, and we got a huge amount. I had a team of people working on it with me. And every day we would watch it come up. You know, here's a volcano. This is 11,000 feet facing to the west. And... Nemesis, or Blue Bonnet, as I used to call it, would come up, materialize, stay there for 10 to 15 minutes at most, and then it would fade away, all right? Because we were catching it, it was coming up and dropping down, coming up and dropping down, and that's the reason why. It came just to the top of its arc. And so if you were going to watch uh, 
you want to see these objects and why is it it's always changing position we have two or we have three or whatever this is the faq you want to look at these are all the slides this is really going to help you give you the good stuff all right and that i think pretty much gets it so i'm going to go ahead and stop the share and here we go and there you are now you're back and people are not allowed to s how many people do you think have seen this many quality images probably not too many to be honest with you i think a lot of people do see these images at times but when they do it's probably doctored already or photoshopped or it's brushed up in a certain degree so there's not too many photographs out there that i would have to consider legitimate and the ones you showed me seem to be, seem to be pretty uh, legit to me marshall yeah and the one thing i invite people to do get on the telegram channel it doesn't cost you anything and uh bet it you can download the video you can take it apart with an image editor. You can do what I do. And I invite you to do it. I want people to do it. You know, I don't want people to just take my word for things. I'm honest. I'm going to give you the real deal. And you know it's the real deal because the sons of bitches who run Google wouldn't want you to see it in the first place. Right. Unfortunately, there's a lot of that going on. Lots of uh, censorship. It's been terrible. And, you know, I, I did have a question for you, Marshall, in regards yeah. to uh, the two objects. You know, there's been a, a bit of a myth propagated by uh, NASA and most of the scientific community that only if an object hits us directly, it could inflict uh, damage on Earth. But that's not necessarily true, is it? No. No. You can have actually... My very first article, when I was doing, my very first article was, could Planet X have killed the dinosaurs? I put it up like January of 2002. The man who helped me was an astronomer from the Smithsonian. And we actually worked on this together. And we were saying, it went back to the Dewey McLean uh, Chichalube impact theory, that that's what took out the dinosaurs. But there's the Deccan trap theory. And on the opposite side of the planet, there were uh, the Deccan traps in India, which are massive, massive, and they're miles thick. Yeah. Huge magma flows. That would have been destructive, equally destructive as well. So... What we were trying to do, this astronomer and I, is say, what could possibly result in this? All right. Well, first, as it could have been from the impact where the the impact Chechalub, you know, it's down in the Yucatan mm -hmm. Peninsula, and it hit, and it was a big, big one. A it big was one. A big one. Oh, yeah. Well, the energy of that impact transits through the core of the earth and came out on the other side. And that's very well what could have caused the Deccan Traps eruption, mm. which also could explain the extinction of the dinosaurs. I believe it was a combination of both. It could be both, yeah. Earth. That's more probable. And here was another thing. I would say, well, fine. What if it didn't impact? Could it trigger a Deccan Traps? And... He said, you know, this is how it could have gone. The object, the impactor, was in a very, very tight orbit around Earth. And on its first pass, it grazed the atmosphere, came through the atmosphere. That would send a massive shockwave, massive shockwave caused deformation of the crust wherever it was. So it could have come, it could have caused this massive shockwave and deformation triggering the Deccan Traps eruptions in India. 
And then it came back, and because of the Kozai mechanism, an object is, when you have a smaller object in a highly irregular orbit, unstable orbit around a larger object, it's going to do one of two things eventually. It's either going to circle the drain and smack into the larger object, or it's just going to go flying out into space. That's mm -hmm. it. It's going to head out in deep space, never be seen again. It's a one-trick pony. And so what he was figuring is that it could have come in, it could have skimmed through the upper atmosphere, created a massive shock wave, triggering the Deccan Traps eruption, and then on its next pass, it impacted in Chicxulub. So there you go, a two for one. It could have happened that way. That's right. And uh, Marshall, you know, human origins, always uh, popular on this program. Do you think ancient man is much older than what's known by uh, today's modern scientists? I think we've been around a lot longer. I think we have come and gone. Yeah, that's what I think too. I mean, it's it's that, recorded throughout a, all his all through cultures that there's been this uh, reset period. Yeah, um, we're coming into disclosure, the revelation. You know, this is the battle of good versus evil, and we are going to learn things that are going to be shocking. People have to accept right now, you are going to learn that we have enemies we never even knew existed. And we have friends we never knew existed as well. All right. And consequently, many of the things that we, the ologies and the isms and the things that our way of, believing that shapes our world are going to prove to be false. There's been a lot of manipulation. And this is going to be difficult for folks. And if you are in awareness, you will transit into it and accept it and deal with it. The ones that are going to have a hard time are the normies. That's right. The people that just... It's really unfortunate they're at a terrible disadvantage. I mean, we have a pull shift that's coming, you know, oh my God, <laughs> we really didn't even get into that one. Yeah, it's happening. But, uh, you want to see my pull shift FAQ. That'll really, you know, people love that. The ones that have been following me, they love it because I connected all the dots for them. Um, when this is happening, you have to understand awareness is so essential to your ability to survive. All right? Now, to compare someone who's been in awareness, such as yourself and your audience, you have a fantastic audience. Yeah, they, I, they're great, and they love you, Marshall. And, you know, one other thing I was going to just quickly throw at you, and I think I have the answer. Well, in my mind, I think I know what you're going to answer with, but do you believe Noah's flood was caused by some sort of celestial event, a pole shift of sorts. Absolutely. It was a pole shift. And I have two accounts of Noah's flood, the one from the, uh, you know, from the five books of Moses, but also the Colburn Bible. Now, the, the Colburn Bible, as we know it today, was... Uh, it's in two parts. You can learn more about it at colbrin.com, K-O-L-B-R-I-N.com. I have a series of articles there. It's be helpful for you. But the Colbrin Bible is in two parts, the Egyptian text of the Bronze Book yeah. and the Celtic text of the Coal Book. Now, the Egyptian texts were penned in about the same time as the Tanakh, the Torah, the five books of Moses. The second part, the second half of it, was about the same time as when the New Testament was being penned. So they follow very much. And the thing about the Colburn Bible is it's not an inspired, it's not inspired of God. All right? As the Bible is. The Bible is inspired. 
the Colburn is just a terrific wisdom text. And the story of it was the last flyby was Exodus. That was the last time Planet X came around. All right. And if you want to know what's going to happen to us this next time coming around, go read the plagues of Exodus. Every one of them is going to happen, starting with the water turning red. Why is that? Because we have shrubberside, iron oxide, and all kinds of ugly stuff in this nemesis cloud that is surrounding nemesis. And when we get into it, it's this iron oxide dust is going to fall. And that is what is turning the water blood red. And what's easy to understand with this uh, go to a brickyard and ask them, hey, how do you make those beautiful cosmetic red bricks or fire bricks? And what they'll say is it's the same material. All we do is throw an iron oxide into it because the iron oxide is what turns it red. But everything else in the plagues of Exodus, and it follows in pretty good order if you reorder it. It's in a narrative, okay? It's allegory. And the thing about it is when people say, well, you know, are you trying to prove that there's flaws in the Bible and all that? No, it's a source. All right. It's not important that the events are in the same sequence as we could sequence them today using science. All right. For example, the first thing is the water turns red. Well, after the water turns red, it turns green from the algae blooms. And the problem with algae blooms is they produce a microcystin toxin that is so powerful, it can kill livestock and humans. Terrible stuff, burns like hell. You don't want to be in the water when it's around. And that's what all this algae is doing. So the water starts red, then it turns to green, then the fish are dying, the frogs are getting the heck out of the water because they can, all right? And then you have, you know, all these other things that just one after another pile in. And so the last flyby was Exodus. The Exodus flyby is what I call the best case scenario. If you want to have a flyby with Planet X, you want another Exodus. Exodus just didn't happen in Egypt. It was global. All right. And it had profound impacts. The Egyptian narrative of Exodus is brilliant because they're, the, the Egyptians just have this thing for granularity. They love details, you know? And God bless them, I love details too. And so they were explaining what happened during Exodus, what happened at the Red Sea. Now it wasn't we, you know, it wasn't reeds and this and that and whatever, all these science theories that they're fumbling and stumbling to explain it. It happened the way the Bible said it did, right? Period. And not only that, the Colburn Bible, the Egyptian account, our Bible is the Is Israelite account. The Colburn Bible has the Egyptian account. And the Egyptian account is that Pharaoh actually led the charge. They were trying to take out the host. And, uh, you know, when Noah, or excuse me, when Moses left Egypt, he had Israelites, but he had a lot of Egyptians as well. And I think the reason why the, he was charging them, the, the people of Egypt were begging the Pharaoh to go get the Jews and bring them back because then their God would follow them. And their God was a more powerful God than the entire pantheon of Egyptian gods. And they wanted to know how did this little scrappy Jew God uh, do so much and whatever it is, bring them back. We want them. But Pharaoh was chasing the host, not to get them to come back as his people were asking him to do. It was a slaughter. They were literally trying to kill their way all the way up to the head of the host where 
Moses was because Moses had taken something, the Ark of the Covenant, all right? Or what was in the Ark of the Covenant? And I believe it was an alien device, a communication device. It uh, emitted a great deal of radiation. It caused, uh, if you were exposed to it, you'd be sick. And uh, the question is, is if it's not a container for something that's radiating, um, you know, nuclear radiation, why is it, 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 it stands to reason you would have gold on the outside of the ark, gold leaf, but why on the inside where nobody could ever see it? Because gold is the best thing for shielding with radiation. That's the reason why if you go look at NASA satellites, you see that gold foil that's around it. It's very, very thin. Oh, yeah. It's paper thin, but it is very, very good at blocking radiation, all right? I think that's what they were going for. But the thing that the Egyptians say is that the pharaoh of Exodus died. He drowned along with his army because he was leading from the front. He wasn't sitting on the hill. He was leading from the front. Interesting thing I found with both accounts, the Israelite and the Egyptian, they never give the exact name of the, uh, the, the ruling family in Egypt at that time. And I think that was a tacit agreement uh, by Moses and the Egyptians because they knew this would be documented throughout history and he, he didn't want to shame his Egyptian family. You know, he was conflicted. He, he had to take his people out of Egypt. But to do that, he had to walk away from the people that raised him from childhood and loved him. And it was a terrible thing. So that's the reason why there was no mention in the Bible, the Holy Bible, or in the Colburn Bible, which is a wisdom text, of the name of Pharaoh. And I don't think you're going to get it. But I... Uh, what we do know is that the pharaoh that replaced him was a quieter, more studious person, and he was reflective. He really wanted to try and understand what had happened. And also it explains that after Moses and the Israelites, you know, after the, the Red Sea and they're off and they're away, it just didn't end there for Egypt. Egypt was invaded by the Ethiopians and other tribes, and they want e Egypt had gold and they had grain, and these other guys wanted it, and so they had to fight terrible battles, uh, and they prevailed, but it cost the Egyptians dearly, and I think this is the reason why. Moses knew, because he was a prince of the inner court, that he had access to all this knowledge, all these deep secrets. And he knew that Planet X, Nibiru, Nemesis, they called it the destroyer. The Celts called it the frightener, but they called it, the Egyptians called it the destroyer, and so did the Israelites. And he knew it was it was going to come around and that the flyby would be something that could actually disrupt the ability of the Egyptian royalty to control the country and to defend their borders. And in that kind of chaos, he would have an opportunity to get his people out. All right. Otherwise, as a prince of the inner court, he knew there would be no point in trying. And I think that's the reason why that, uh, Moses waited for as long as he did to bring, you know, to go into Egypt and bring his people out. Right. He understood the timing. And this is, Michael, this is important because it goes to what we're going through today. Because as you've seen with all these images, we have the two suns in the sky. 
and I've showed you so many of them, you have to be a hysterical idiot to say they're all lens flares. Or you're a troll. And it doesn't matter. You're an operative. And the whole point of it is you're telling people, don't look up, don't look up, don't look up. Listen to us. Be emotional. Never use critical thinking. But what is driving everything right now politically, and I have maintained this for years, is the good guys and the bad guys know it is coming. And they've both known all this time. And why is it now we're starting to have the emergence of this freedom movement? And I would ask, invite you to come read my articles, uh, How the Meek Inherit the Earth. And I explain this history of it. What we have is the same kind of timing thing. The White Hats, the Alliance, and the Alliance is about 200 militaries around the world. This is huge. We have a massive battle of good versus evil. And good is has opened up a can of whoop-ass and they're getting some, all right? But people are, and this is as I point out in one of my articles, is that we have, and I this last one that I did, this last article that I did, uh, how the meek inherit the earth number 12 and I'm talking about the Trump Magador maneuver but in that I make a point of saying that the timing is everything and this has been a, a long ongoing thing and this is where my reporting is where I'm really interested right now is talking Everyone's focused on Trump. To me, Trump is a figurehead. All right, like he's a all, leader, like the rest he's, of them. Yeah, he's and he's good. He's a good guy. All right. Uh, I see a lot of people. Well, he's this. He's that. They're nitpicking, that second guessing, and all of that. <clears throat> As I say in my article, if you want to know who the good guys are, look for the people who are genuinely compassionate by nature who do spontaneous compassion someone that'll help an old lady across the street okay you're not going to see a black cat helping an old lady across the street unless they can rob her blind i mean they have no compassion whatsoever and so this is what you're looking for but as it was during exodus Nemesis, once again, is driving the politics. That is the driver. That is what, because the black hats, the globalistas, as 107 calls them, I like that term, it's good, the globalistas, they know, they know Nemesis caused Exodus. They know Nemesis caused Noah's flood, the deluge, all right? I mean, for God's sakes, the deluge story, there's, some people estimate there's as many as 200 accounts of the deluge in the folklore, the literature, and you know, the spoken history of cultures around the world. So it's just not one version. There's many, many versions of it. And there's a good deal of consistency. The version that is in Colburn Bible is it builds on what is in the Holy Bible. The Holy Bible is really, you know, it's a little, it doesn't go into the heavy levels of granular detail that the Egyptians do. Because the Egyptians, when they were writing this, they were trying to figure out how they got their butts whooped by a Jewish God. <laughs> it was like their 9 11 report. Right. Seriously. So, they they know it's coming, and the interesting thing about Noah's flood is that you know, people talk about the fountains of the deep, right? Well, absolutely, fountains of the deep would have occurred 
because we have vast underground aquifers and seas of water, huge amounts of water underground. And if you have the shell, the crust of the earth, as I point out in one of my other articles, it's expanding right now because there's what I call core lock. Nemesis has locked on to the core of the planet. And you want to FAQ number five, I show you exactly how it works. So you want to watch all the FAQs. And if you have a friend that's getting turned on to this and they're starting to ask questions, I did it for those of you who are in awareness and you're going to have to deal with newbies that are going, well, what the hell's this bullshit you've been talking about? You know? Oh, boy, who needs that, right? And you just say, well, go look at YOWUSA.com and click on Planet X FAQ. Watch all 10. It'll bring you up to speed. You'll know what's important. That's right. Absolutely. And that's, that's what I put it there for. And if when you get to number five, the first four are really for newbies. I go the basic, what's Planet X? What's Planet 9? Planet Nine is Pupu Kaka. But uh, then I go into number three and number four. And this is, uh, this is ground floor for newbies coming in. Number five through 10 is where I really start talking to people who have been following this for some time. Yes. And uh, you want to do that. But the thing about uh, the Noah's Flood or the Great Deluge, and in the Egyptian account uh, from the Colburn, it is the story of Sisuda and Hanok. And it has a massive amount of detail. And it parallels uh, very much what is in the Bible. And it's important for people to understand, in those days, there was no copyright law. All right? You didn't have, you know, fact checkers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had, you know, I can only imagine fact checkers, right? And the thing is, the Egyptians gave great detail, and the ark was built on the side of a mountain. And Sisuda was the king. Hanok was Sisuda was approached, and, and, and typical of Bible stories is you have angels guardian angels or whatever come down and they tell someone who can do something and they say this is what's going to happen right and so he had these king sasuda had these angels if you want or extraterrestrials who came to him and said this is going to happen you need to do something sasuda took it to heart he was a very wise king very prosperous, too. He then went and retained the services of a master shipbuilder by the name of Hanok. He was very well respected. And the first thing Hanok said is, I can build you the ark. And by the way, the dimensions that the Israelis give, Israelites give, is the same dimensions that the Egyptians give. Again, the knowledge is fungible. It goes, you know, different societies are taking these things and recompiling and adding, you know, context that is of cultural perspective for them, but they're sharing this information. And this was all throughout that time. You'd have caravans were huge uh, ways to, to take knowledge because these caravans would go from one place to another, travel great distances, and when they arrived wherever they're going to go, people want, hey, what did you learn? What do you know? What's coming on? All right? And that's how they pulled this thing together. But in the story of Sasuda and Hanok, Hanok said, we will build this on the side of a mountain. If we build it in the harbor which makes sense to everybody, it will be destroyed. See, Hanok knew it would be a massive tsunami, a wall of water a thousand feet high. All right. 
That's only going to happen when you have a pole shift with a crustal displacement, you know, and the skin of the planet is moving around. That's right. So that's what's going to generate that. Now, Hanok built the ark on the side uh, it, and also in a narrow valley so the water would be channeled. All right. And he picked a place where the waters would not slam into the side of the ark, which would then just roll it over and bust it up into toothpicks, but that the force of the wave was so spent that it would ebb at about the place where the ark is so that the water would pass under the keel, lifting the ark off its chocks and pulling it out to sea. And that's how it happened, according to the Egyptians. Makes perfect sense. It doesn't conflict with the Bible because the Bible story just doesn't have that much detail. Whereas the Egyptians, oh my God, you are full read of detail. The Passenger Manifest. <laughs> it's the longest paragraph in the Gold Book. Um, you know, the makers of bricks, the makers of this, the makers of that, the makers of the other thing. So there's a tremendous amount of history. And the thing is that Noah's flood, as I point out in my FAQ series, was a worst case scenario, whereas Exodus is a best case scenario. What we're going to have is a bit of both. The reason why is when Nemesis is right now, it's at its point of perihelion, and it's been, you know, for for the longest time, and when it came into our sky, it was on its aphelion leg of its orbit. Well, when it reaches perihelion, and this is what we're tracking right now in my sign series, is that is when it is closest to the sun, and after that point of perihelion, it then goes into what it's called its aphelion lake. Perihelion is, gets you as close to the sun as possible. Aphelion is as far away from the sun as possible. Once it's in aphelion and it's headed south, it's going to cross the ecliptic, the plane of our system, and once it's just below that, and this will happen in about 2030, that's when we're going to have our pole shift. Uh, we're going to have tremendous amount of anomalous weather. We're already having that right now. The planet is, is being perturbed by Nemesis. I point this out when you go through my FAQs. Right. I explain this. And of course, don't wait for NASA to confirm these sort of things because they're going to go silent. They're not going to disclose anything. For, I yeah, think no, I would have to. Just going to wait for everybody to die. Pretty you much. Know, NASA huh? never a straight answer. Uh, it's uh, I, the things that I see NASA do are just disappointing beyond 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 doubt. Yeah, NASA and the elites have known about this for decades upon decades about what's to come. That's why That's they've. Right. They've uh, built all these elaborate underground facilities. That's right. And, you know, we have the deep underground military bases. And, but right now, you know, it's an interesting thing on my signs article, is this has been going on for a long time, is that total, we, what we do is we track earthquakes of all magnitudes during the Obama years, oh, you know, Obama is such a dirty, filthy liar about everything. I mean, you know, just makes me sick. And they were jiggering the numbers on earthquakes. So remember, it would come out and it would say, an earthquake struck, it's a 7.1. And the next day, USGS would say, no, it was a 6.8. And then we'd have a 6.2, and the next day it's a 5 point something. And they were always jiggering downwards. I think in all the years I was tracking it, 
once or twice they jiggered upwards by the way there was an earthquake in california um uh just the other day i believe it was yeah like 5.2 they say yeah quote unquote 5.2 yeah the one i'm waiting for uh there's an article on my site and i think i was it which one is uh it's a catastrophic submarine volcano event is building in the philippine sea all right and the reason why it's specific to the philippine sea is that is where the crust of the earth is thinnest it's thicker everywhere else but it's as little as five miles maybe 10 kilometers who knows but it's fairly and we're talking about the trench Marianas, all right? And it, what we're what's going on right now is Nemesis is interacting with the core of the planet. And this has caused a lot of problems. Now they're using what is uh, what are the deep state schmuckarinos, the globalistas. I like that. I like globalistas. That's that's really cool. That's just like watching an Ed Casey movie or something. But the they are using this to confuse people with this, you know, carbon, you know, green. We we have to get carbon down. There's too much carbon. Right. Really? So they say. Really? Really? Kiss my grits. Kiss my grits. There's too much carbon. The planet is greening, for God's sakes. I've been tracking this since 1999. How is it that we're the whole Earth is going to be turned into a desolate desert if we don't have electrical vehicles and, a, and airplanes that fly on expensive fuel that's been reprocessed from McDonald's fry machines. Uh, what's they're going on? No, nah, it's, it's, it's all, it's bull. It's bull. The planet is greening. And actually, historically, carbon levels right now are actually low. And if the carbon levels were to drop more because of what the elites are wanting to do, we're talking about if the carbon drops enough, we're only 4% of the atmosphere, it goes down to 2%, then what are you going to have? You're going to have plants are going to start dying because what do they live on? They live on the carbon. They give us oxygen. That's a pretty good deal, you know? Oops, drop my drop my microphone. No worries. And uh, so the truth is, in terms of carbon, again, as I've maintained over the years, is the worst that we could do with all carbon sources put together is the equivalent of a real good volcano fart. All right. There's other chemicals in the sky and things that we need to get out. And yes, I mean, that is uh, not good for the environment. But this whole green initiative, it is based on just like COVID. COVID was, wasn't a real plague. It was a statistical invention. And so this whole green thing is another statistical invention. And they're doing it because it gives them a twofer. One is that now they got a way to suck our blood that they didn't have before, but right. two, they got a way to distract us from what's really causing the weather that we're seeing. We do have weird weather right now. Right now we do. But that's Absolutely. not climate change. Climate change takes thousands of years. It just doesn't happen overnight. But weather can change. You know, like they say in California on the coast, you don't like the weather, wait 10 minutes. That's true. Right? Yeah. And uh, this is the way it goes. So there's a lot of disinformation. Unfortunately, yes. And the reason why uh, 
I did my FAQ videos was I've been around doing this. I'm one of the, you know, actually Nancy Leader and I are the two old silverbacks of Planet X. We've been around longer than anybody else, period. We're still talking about it. There's others that come and go, come and go. Then you got the entertainers that just simply want the traffic so that they can make the bucks. And they're telling you, well, you tell me what to think in the comments. Like, oh, man, that's such a that's such a cheap, crap-ass thing to do to people. You tell me. Now, they just want the numbers. They don't want to. They're not looking for truth. You're going to tell people about something you're going to show it, do the work, vet it as much as you can and share what you have found in your vetting and help other people, you know, give them a leg up so that they can do it on their own instead of a leg down into a comment, you know, that's going to help the guy generate traffic. And what I, the big thing I saw was the sponging that has gone on. And I mean, I have seen it over 20 years. And I am telling you, the information that I could find about all manner of things, all manner of things, 20 years ago was amazing and sponged. Mostly all of it's gone. Mostly all of it's gone. And they've been methodically taking it away. And so that was for me is I'm trying to give people back their history. You know, like they're going, look, it's that big ugly thing in the sky that's gonna kill you. And everybody go, what the hell's the story on this? And if you go to Google, Google's gonna go, oh, it's uh, a figment of Trump's imagination or some other bullshit, right? No, it's not. And that's the reason why I did the FAQs. I wanna give people the history because I can because I lived through it. I was there. You look at my video, what is Planet Nine? I'm not talking about, well, could this and that and the other thing. Right. I was reporting on Planet Nine when it first came out. Yeah, you're one of the, the um, I guess, veterans in the game here, uh, Marshall. I, I still remember many moons ago in the late 90s, early 2000s, hearing about Planet X through you on terrestrial radio. And uh, mm -hmm. furthermore, I know what you're talking about is it, it's quite scary to know that a lot of things are being scrubbed online. We've been seeing lots of websites just getting uh, completely removed, a lot of information, lots of text documents, a lot of articles just uh, yes. just sort of uh, evaporating. And that always uh, makes me worried about how history will sort of uh, tell the, the stories of what, what's gone on, how history will remember these times and... That's the frightening part, Marshall, because uh, governments, uh, I mean, they, they don't really have a good track record, as you know, Marshall. <laughs> Nor historians. I mean, they rewrite. No, they, they don't have a track record. Uh, and It's uh, kind of a... Let, let's say they have a track record. They, yeah. But it's not one you would be proud of. That's right. It's, it's very perturbing, the way uh, everything's sort of unfolding. But Marshall, I mean, I, we could talk for another hour easily, but... I definitely want to uh, give you plenty of time to relax and enjoy the rest of your day, my friend. It's been a, a great time here with you, and I definitely want you to plug anything you'd like before we uh, completely part ways. Well, thank you, Michael. And folks, come to my site, yowusa.com. You can also find it, marshallmasters.com. Check out my Planet X FAQs and my How the, How the Meek Inherit the Earth. Uh, these articles are really popular, especially my last one on the uh, Magador maneuver for Trump. And I'm working on my next one, which will be titled A More Perfect Union. My thing is I'm not so much focused on the political jib-jab of the day. I'm really interested in the global alliance. The global alliance. That's where I'm trying to go with these articles because this is, we're in a battle that has been centuries coming and I want people to understand it. And uh, I think that'd be a, 
when I get this next one up, I think that'd be a great show for us to come back to. What do you think? I'm all in, Marshall. As you know, I love uh, the time that we spend here together talking about these sort of things, things that actually matter uh, for the most part. And yes, people are going to freak out once they see the weather changes that are going to be uh, coming their way rather soon. I mean, what we're experiencing now is nothing compared to what the flyby will bring. Yeah, it's going to be in my book, Revelation and Planet X. I give people a, a little a taste of prophecies yeah. so that you can get an idea of what's coming. But it's also in my other books, and the I'm and I wrote all of my books over the years because I've known what's coming since probably I think we. We knew Planet X was real, I think, in 2008, after the Ulysses NASA probe. And that was, I didn't need to see a video, you know, a picture right. of anything. That was the thing. And I always knew what was coming. And my books, I wrote all my books, not for the, the, the current time that I was in when I was writing the book. Everything I wrote is for the future time that... Basically, I wrote all my books for 2025. And 2025 is when the guacamole hits the fan and things go sideways. And that's when people are going to need that. So lots to talk about. I look forward to coming back with you and your magnificent audience. My goodness, that's yowusa.com, Y-O-W-U-S-A.com. Once again, Marshall, I will see you on the other side. Absolutely.